Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to part 3. Last time, we built this awesome 8-bit carry cancel ladder that you see in front of you. And if you missed that part, I'll leave a link in the video description, so uh, check it out. But in this part, we're not going to be talking about adders. In this part, we're going to be starting the Arithmetic Logic Unit, or ALU. And this is actually a pretty important part of the computer. What the ALU does is it's a circuit that takes two binary inputs, kind of like this adder, and what it will do is it will let you choose one of several arithmetic or logic functions to perform on it. So, so very briefly, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I've taken an existing ALU and input 5 and 3. And on the side, I've selected the addition function. So 5 plus 3 is indeed 8 in binary. If I select a different function, like say the subtract function, 5 minus 3 is 2. Cool. If I select yet another function, like this is the XOR function. And if you notice the inputs, if you would Put these through an XOR gate, that is indeed what you would get. So, yeah, it's just, this is sort of how an AOU works. You have two inputs, and you can select which arithmetic or logical function you want the circuit to perform on them. And it's really cool. This sort of thing is going to be the basis of, really, all the computing in the computer. Now, before we jump in and start building this, I think it's only fair to acknowledge something. The ALU I'm about to build here is about 95% identical to an ALU created by Coyarn. And it's not completely identical. I do a few things a little bit differently, and I add a couple small things that he didn't, and exclude a few small things that he did, but the reason I'm building an ALU that is so similar to his is because Coyarno's ALU design has just a whole arsenal of really awesome properties that make it incredibly useful for making a computer with. And I have yet to find any ALU design that offers a comparable set of features. So it's really awesome. Special thanks to Koyarno for his amazing ALU design. And with that, let's go ahead and let's get building. Okay, so right now we have an 8-bit adder. That's the addition function done. So we have some arithmetic. Let's add some logic to so the first logical function I want to add is the OR. And this is actually probably easier than you might think. Because the first thing this adder does right here is an XOR. And this really is the basis of everything that happens afterwards. If there isn't a carry, then the XOR just goes straight to the output. See? That output right there is an XOR because we're not getting a carry. So all we have to do is instead of powering this wire as an XOR, power it as an OR. And that's the OR gate done. We have an OR function. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this wire right here is an OR between our two inputs. See? It's only on if one of the inputs is on. And it's only off if both are on. So, I'm going to bust this up with a half slab, and the reason I have this here is just so that it will tile when I stack it downwards. And I'm going to bust it over here using a comparator. And this comparator is what's going to allow us to select whether we're using the OR function or not. So, if I have it just like this, you'll notice now we have an OR between our two inputs. Just like that, it's really that simple. And part of the beauty of this, of doing it like this, 
is you'll notice this automatically disables the carry so we don't have to worry about carry by default it's powering this torch and yeah it's amazing so all we need now is some way well we really need to stack this and add a control wire and I'm gonna add the control wire right here I'm gonna have a repeater and whoops not on any delay and I'm gonna have a half slab tower this is gonna be our control wire We'll decide whether we're ordering or adding. And there we go. Now all I need to do is set... Well, I need to stack this somehow. That might be a little tricky, so uh, bear with me for a moment. I'm going to set this to position 1. And I'm going to set this to position 2. And I'm going to add a half slab here, I think. And I believe this should probably stack correctly. Stack one down. All right, cool, it appears to be working. So I'm gonna go ahead and stack seven down. And I don't think this included this half slab, so I'm gonna set this to position one and position two. I'm going to expand the selection one down and stack seven down. And that should have, yeah, that has the half slab everywhere. So cool. Now if I input 5 and 3 right now, this should be acting as an OR. Yeah, it's ORing the two outputs together. And if I will add a torch here, replace this with a solid block, cool, that disables the OR and now we're adding again. So we can either OR or we can add. And awesome, just like that, now before we get into the next part of this, I'd like to just change up our ore a little bit. I'd like to power it from here. It's just one block lower, and that'll just make the wiring a little bit easier when we eventually hook this up to something. So, there. Now for the next part of our AOU, I'd like, you, I'd like to make a couple observations. First off, let's turn on ore mode, and let's ore together some inputs. Now, when I'm doing this OR, the whole function is completed in this wire right here. All the rest of the adder logic, the final XOR, and this fancy carry logic, for all intents and purposes, it's doing nothing. It's just sort of there. We aren't doing any useful logic with it. So that's the first thing I'd like to observe. Now I'm going to turn OR back off. The second thing I'd like you to observe is Let's pretend this input is stuck on on for some reason. And we can only control this input. What does the XOR do? Well, if this input is off, the XOR is on. If this input is on, the XOR is off. You might notice that's a NOT gate. That's an invert. So if one of the inputs of an XOR gate is stuck at on, then the XOR gate's effectively acting as an invert. And as we just noticed, we have an XOR gate right here that we aren't doing any useful logic with. Do you see where I'm going with this? So if we just power the other input to this XOR, we can get inversion of the output essentially for free, and we'll have the NOR gate. So the way we're going to do this is with a little trick called flood care. And in carry cancel adders, it's actually pretty easy to implement. All you have to do is power this. Basically, disable the cancel. So if we don't cancel any of the carries, then any carry will go through to every single one of these XORs. And since all the inputs to all the XORs will be stuck at on, it'll be an invert. Unfortunately, powering this isn't quite as simple as what I'm doing here. I mean, logically speaking, this works. You could power the cancel torch, for lack of a better name, from the side like this, and everything would work just fine. The problem is, we're going to want this space right here for some other circuitry in the future. So, instead, I'm going to power it from the side, right here. Of a comparator. 
And this means, yeah, doing it naively like this, sure it disables the torch, but it also powers the XORG. It's like inputting one of the inputs for us, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to use a comparator to subtract enough signal strength from this so that it only disables the torch and doesn't influence this XOR gate at all. And yeah, that's my plan. So first off, before we do anything else, it's important that we stack this. So I'm going to go ahead and just lay out a little bit of wiring to, well, do this. And I think this is the right amount to do. So I'm going to go down one, set this as position one. I'm going to go shore up here, set this as position two. I'm going to expand one. And whoops, right here, I'm going to copy. And I'm just going to start pasting. So here I'm going to paste dash A. Cool, it connects. And here, again, paste dash A. And one more time. And just like that, we have all of our signals. So this is our flood carry town. And I'm going to break this block, place a solid block, and say this is our input. This does flood carry. So if I turn this on, it reaches all the inputs. And actually, the last one is already at the perfect signal strength. Just enough to reach the torch, but not enough to go through the XOR gate and do anything meaningful. So there's two ways you can power these comparators. One way is by using a... I just throw it. I did. Okay, let me get a new one. One way is by using a hopper and putting it here and filling it with items until it subtracts enough signal strength. If you're on the OR server, though, you can get this nifty gray shulker box, and it has furnaces pre-designed to emit specific signal strengths. So that's really cool, and I'm going to be using this trick to do this. So for the first one, we want to subtract a signal strength of 12. And I already got this out ahead of time, just to save a bit of video time. So whoops, 12. And I, oh, right. The comparator should be in subtract mode. There you go. So yeah, comparator in subtract mode. The next one should be eight for the perfect amount of signal strength. So there. Now you can see again, reaching that. And same thing here, reaching but not interfering. And last one, we want to subtract four. So I'm going to this block here, put the furnace down, and that's not enough for some reason. That's interesting. Ah, because it's in that subtract mode. That's important. So all the comparators are in subtract mode. And I don't need this here, so I'm just going to break it. And there, now we have flood carry. I can break this wiring too, don't need it. So awesome, we now have a way of disabling all the torches. If we look at the output, it's uh, not quite complete. And that's because we don't have the carry in all, the final part of the carry line. So that's just something you're going to have to remember. When you want to do flood carry, you have to turn on the carry. So let's test this. Let's put this in OR mode. Let's OR 5 and 3. What do you know? It's doing the OR, and it's inverting the output. So we now have a NOR gate. That's awesome! So now what happens if I disable the OR? In fact, let me label this. OR. If I disable the OR, look at that. Now this is acting like an XNOR gate. So the inverse, or the an XOR gate with an inverted output. And that's really cool. So now we have four different functions that our AOU can perform. We can perform, well, we disable everything bring it back to the default add state. We can add, we can OR the end outputs together, we can flood carry to make this NOR like you just saw, or we can just straight up flood carry by itself to make it XNOR like you also just saw. 
So cool. This is a fantastic basis for an AOU. It's definitely not complete yet, but we've made some good headway. We have a good set of logical functions. We have some the most essential arithmetic function, I should say. And yeah, so thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And in the next video, we're going to continue working on this AOU. Add a few more functionalities just to flesh it out a bit, make it more generally useful. Thank you. See you then.